So I lost everything, went back, I was bankrupt, I slept in my car for a year. Right. I hate my job. I just want to be in real estate full time. When you wake up in the morning, you get up, mm -hmm. you work your ass off all day, right. you go home, you go to bed, you do it all again the next day, right? Your life, your day to day is not going to change at all. What is your piece of advice for those individuals that want to get into real estate with the mindset of, I want to be a millionaire? You got to be willing to um, adapt. You got to right. be willing to, you know, listen and, and, and you've got to put your ego aside. And that's why the mission of Zero to Diamond and the reason why it's free is to reduce the value rate. But we never saw a negative year in appreciation for real estate. Oh, and, and I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> come on, get it spicy now, Ricky, come on. So how can you sit here and tell us no, don't worry. You know, it's perfect time to get into real estate, man. But you don't know what kind of storm I'm talking about. Ah, uh, you said. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Respect My Blueprint podcast. This is the show where we highlight the blueprint of successful entrepreneurs across all industries. And today's guest, I have a very wonderful guest here that's going to, you know, discuss about not only the game of real estate, but how to become successful in it, right? And this conversation is going to be very, very intriguing because unlike, you know, previous guests, this guy here actually has receipts, okay? He has receipts for his, uh, um, for what he's cooking up, which, you know, not many people can sh say that they have a nearly 99% success rate on the service that they're providing and this gentleman here not only you know is going to share those secrets but also you know the blueprints around to get it as well too so i am honored and excited to go ahead and roll out real estate entrepreneur real estate investor and also you know leader as well as an influencer ricky caruth how you doing brother what's up bro all right how, how you feeling you? today i'm good okay man love nice. the smile love the energy yeah, yeah. yeah i actually uh my flight got canceled yesterday what right coming down um and so i had a i had to book another flight right i had direct flights coming and going and um well did I, had to, I had to rebook for a for a <laughs> connecting flight that was about five times more money on a one way. Oh my God, bro. I mean, <laughs> gee, well, listen, you got it done. All they had was a first class ticket. I said, okay, cool. Then I get to Atlanta and it was a two hour delay on the second flight. Damn. I finally, <laughs> get, to bed. finally. I finally get to my room and get to sleep about one. I was supposed to land about three. So, but I was still in the gym at six. Man, see that and that right there, you know, because I, I, I want to highlight that. Life always throw curveballs at you. You just highlighted that, right? But guess what? You still was like, okay, no matter what, I'm still going to do me, right? I'm still going to get my daily work, workout in, accomplish my goals and things that I've set out for myself and things like that. So, and I see here you're, you know, you're a, a, you're a father. You're a married man as well, too. So before I get into all of the good <laughs> details, right? <laughs> If you could go ahead and share with the audience a little bit, who is Ricky Carew? Man, that's a good question. Yeah, who is? Who is? So far in this few minutes, they didn't know you're, you've are you been dealing with flights right now and you're into real estate. But go ahead and share with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grew up in Alabama. Okay. Right, right on the Florida-Alabama line. Right, right on the there. Beach. Right on the beach. Okay, so you're in the central time zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was another thing that got yeah, me today. Yeah, exactly. Six o'clock <laughs> yeah. is five o'clock. But anyway, um, yeah, I grew up right there. And okay. uh, people don't realize the Florida beaches, like Destin, Panama City, Fort Walton. New Smyrna uh, and everything like that. Is that New Smyrna Beach? Is that up no, there? No, that's, that's probably okay. a little further down. Okay. But um, Pensacola, Fort Walton, Navarre, Pensacola, all that goes into Alabama, right? So right. So about 40 miles of white, sandy, beautiful beaches, awesome. palm trees. So although dollars. you're in another state, you're still enjoying the I'm fruits still and on the venom. beach, right? Got so it. I grew up right there on the beach. Beautiful. So went to Gulf Shores Elementary, Foley High School, and all that good stuff. So group roofing houses. So as soon as soon as me and my brother were old enough to... <laughs> roofing like, houses. We, we were actually on, a, on job sites at uh, eight, eight years old, seven or eight, cleaning up. Right, cause Wait a minute. It was this like a family-owned business or mm, something like that? My dad owned it, but I yeah, mean, okay. he started it. But he started he it. He'd been doing it for a long time and stuff. So okay, when we and like my parents didn't send us to daycare and stuff like that. We went to work <laughs> with mom and dad. So we were at home, you know. And then when mom started working after we got a little older, 
right? Then we were we went to work with them, right? So I, we'd be we'd be at work with mom or be at work with dad, and uh, so it was just kind of natural to start working, getting your hands we dirty, there, right? Uh, at, the at the construction site, anyway. So right. We, we okay. <laughs> cleaning up the job, he'd have us just clean up little nails and stuff around the job okay. site and stuff. Learning the essence of work. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and that was really what started all of this, honestly. Really? Yeah, because the work ethic part. Right? Uh, so it wasn't, forget the real estate aspect that you're just on the roof of the house doing things and end up morphing into your career now, just the fact of, hey, work ethic. Yeah, like fast forwarding a little bit um, past a lot of stuff, just to touch on that subject. Right. When, when, I, uh, when I got in real estate, it was 2002, the market blew up. I made a million bucks before I'm 23, right? This is before the, 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 the 08 crash. Right, right, right. So before the crash, there was this boom. And that was For, what, that was leading up to that it. what caused the bubble. Right, okay. So when the bubble popped, right, I was mid-20s, didn't know how to handle it, right? I'd right. Be, I had basically been introduced into the business like that, into this boom. Right, market, okay. Right? So I lost everything, went back. I was bankrupt. I slept in my car for a year. This is when 2008 hit, right, obviously. Yeah, what actually right. hit in 06, 07. 07 was the year that I was sleeping in my car, roofing houses again, Damn. serving tables. I was eating out of people's refrigerators. Um, really hit rock people. bottom. Yeah, sleeping on people's couches and stuff. And so people are like, how did you deal with that? That How was your mental health? Yes. During that time, right? Good question. Good question. Yeah. And, and it comes back to what we just talked about. You know, for me, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me what I'm what I'm doing, right? It, it, this is what I tell part time agents, right? I, <laughs> part time I, listen, agents. I, I, like I, co <laughs> I coach thousands of agents, <laughs> right, right? Okay. And a lot of part time agents, right? I hate my job. I just want to be in real estate full time. I'm like, okay, uh, okay. But hold on a second, right? right? Right now, when you wake up in the morning, you get up. You mm -hmm. work your ass off all day, right. you go home, you go to bed, you do it all again the next day, right? Right. A cycle, right? Right. So mm -hmm. when you go full-time real estate, what are you going to do? You're going to get up, you're going to work your yes, ass off uh, all day, <laughs> go, you're gonna go home, go to bed, do it again, right? <laughs> right, I good said, point. So how's okay. your life going to change? Your life, your day-to-day -day is not going to change at all. You're still going to get up at the same time, work uh, just as hard, and actually it's going to be more stressful because now you're your own boss. Now you got to go out there. Now you're responsible for the marketing, the expenses, the Everything. prospecting, the conversion, the processing. You're responsible. So it's even worse than with the situation you're in now. So you better enjoy what you got while you got it. If you are going to go full time, then you, you're going to look back and say, man, those were some good old days when I was working part time. That right? is true. Make you appreciate it a little more when you do be able to flip that, that switch too, to full time. That right? too. But the, but the bigger point is, is that it, your life doesn't change. Your day to day, you're still going through the same, same motions, thing. working the same hours, doing the same stuff. And so when I lost everything, you know, the day that I decided I had to quit real estate for a second because I didn't have any money, I couldn't pay bills, I had to go pay bills. Right. The next day, <laughs> the next day I have a big smile on my face and I'm on a roof. I literally, the next day, I'm on a roof, roofing a house. I had plenty of people that. Yeah, my dad, you know, owned a roofing business. We knew every roofer, you know, around. Right. All I do is just make one phone call and say, because, I mean, I was one of the best roofers out there. So right? why not roofing then? Why why transition? Hard what labor. Was Number one, hard labor. Right. <laughs> okay, so you're smart. There you go. Number right. one, hard labor. But the biggest thing was scalability. Mm. How are you going to become a, how are you going to make $100 million as a roofer? Now, I know that the, I, I know this guy that became a billion dollar roofer. He was a billionaire. A billionaire yeah, as, yeah, a yeah. Roofer. as a roofer. Okay. And what he did was, you know, he roofed right. until he built his own company. Right? right. And then he built it out, right, and had tons of crews and everything. But then right. what he did to become a billionaire was he opened up a supply shop, roofing supplies. Oh, And then he franchised the, the, the supply shops. Okay. And so he was a billion-dollar roofer, right? Right. Okay. I could do that. Okay. True. But the thing is, and you'll learn this about me in the podcast, is I don't want any employees. None. None? None. Too much headache? Yeah. Well, yeah, not, that not, is not, true. Not, yeah. not, 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 not only the headache. <laughs> right, right. Not only the headache, but but when I go home and go to sleep at night, mm -hmm. I'm not going to bed thinking, are my employees going to be okay? You know, uh, uh, yeah. uh, how is their livelihood? Um, worried about their lives, you know what I mean. I don't the need liability. I don't, I don't need that everything. pressure. I don't yeah. need that stress. I don't need.
people depending on me on that level. They can depend on me on other and other levels. So right. I'm kind of jumping around, but it's just bringing up some really good stuff so you can kind of understand my okay. point of view on a bunch of different things. I'm more of a well, – I, I found my place because when I started – coaching agents for free and building my brand. And now I have this large brand and I'm in a bunch of different, right, which we're going to talk estate, on. Right. Right. Cause I'm in sales, coaching, investing, mortgage and brokerage. And so my brand feeds all these businesses. Right. Right. Well, w w my thing is, is each of these entities, I don't right. have any employees. I'm partners with other companies that have 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 employees that have hundreds of employees, right? Which I get to take advantage of as if they're my own. They have sales, right. they have marketing, they have the everything, infrastructure right? already. I see. And now what you're I can saying. go in and partner with these companies and make a cut off the top, mitigate your risk, no expenses, right? With no worries, no anything. I don't have to have any employees. I can go out here and and make my seven figure a month and not. With just a solopreneur, right? Wow. And, th and this this creates um, a very low stress life, right? I know I know guys with hundreds of employees. Like I know a guy he has seven hundred employees. They did one hundred and twenty million in revenue across his seven companies or whatever True. last year and stuff like that. And I look at that and I think I don't want nothing to do with it. I mean, I'll that's I mean, a lot of people, you know, get get find to find success by the amount of people within their organization, right? They feel like that's, you know, defines you leadership, right? I have a brokerage, right? So, right. like, I'm partnered with a brokerage that allows me to bring in agents and make a, cut, a royalty off of those agents. I have a 1,000 agents, right. right, and growing all over the country, all over the world, right? right? Okay. So, um, you know, I've got, you know, 30,000, 40,000 agents in my coaching program. That's a free program. However, I have sponsorship deals. Which you have about an almost a 99% success rate. We're going to talk on that. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> but anyway, my point is, is uh -huh. if you want to count bodies in organizations, I got the numbers for that. But I'm not directly related to, it's not, they're not employees of mine. Right. Human capital is not yeah. the, uh, it's more of the, I guess, Well, it's a different way to think about it. Right. right. It's just a different way because I know guys that teach make your first hire. Go out, build your company, hire another person, hire another person, hire right. another person, right? Scale that way. Okay. If that's your and, – and a lot of people go out and build these massive companies like that, knock yourself out. Well, oh, which the viewers right now, you said a, a very intriguing line that, you know, raised the spider senses of a lot of individuals. You said, you know – as you were getting into real estate, you end up making your first million dollars and, you know, obviously your successful platform. So let me ask you a question. There's so many misassumptions mis about real estate. So many misassumptions. Yeah, right. Tons. Hey, uh, you don't need any money. Zero down. <laughs> you know, you can do this. OPM style, such as such, yeah, fix yeah, and yeah. flips, you know, yeah, yeah. the burr strategy, yep. you know, but everyone here are, everyone that gets into real estate has the end goal in mind, which you've achieved, which is end up becoming a millionaire or making a million dollars. So what is your, as we just ready to kick off the show, we're going to take a deep dive into this. You know, what is your piece of advice for those individuals that want to get into real estate with the mindset of, I want to be a millionaire? Well, there's a lot of different ways. You is can it really do it. difficult? Mm. Depends on your definition of difficult. Right? Well, you you've already had the prerequisite of the work ethic, but what else is attached to that then, in real estate uh, terms? You gotta be. You have to be a really good student. You gotta be. You gotta be willing to to flex. You gotta be willing to um, adapt. You gotta right. be willing to you know listen and and uh, you've got to put your ego aside. Um, you know, like real estate agents, for example, right? It takes on average six months to get to your first deal. And that's that, that's for the 10% that make it. So 90% of agents who get their license never even sell anything, end up quitting. Whoa, 90%. Whoa, whoa. Ricky, I brought you onto the platform to be encouraging, to up uplift. No, no, you no, just no. discouraged a lot of... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. But, but it's facts. Right. right, okay. And, and that's why the mission of Zero to Diamond and the reason why it's free is to reduce the failure rate, right? And I've got uh, hundreds and hundreds and probably well into the thousands of agents who have reached out to me over the last six years and said, hey, I would have quit if it wasn't for Zero to Diamond. 
So, and every time I go speak, not every time, but a lot of times I'll say, how many people here think that they wouldn't even be in the business if it wasn't for Zero to Diamond? And our, there's always maybe boom, five, boom, six, hands, seven, yeah. eight people, you know. Uh, every time somebody tells me I was going to quit until I ran across your stuff and started implementing, and now here we are, I'm crushing it, I'm doing this or that. Right. That's what kind of kept me going because the first two years, when I got to the point where I was, where I was making a meal a year okay. in real estate, that now this you're just an uh, uh, agent at just this an point. agent okay just okay. an agent uh-huh. and um, it was 2017 and that was the year I wrote two books started coaching writing so okay. like I got in in 02 made a mill right lost it got back in in 08 I was working on an oil rig <laughs> I got I got laid off I got laid off from the oil rig damn right okay. back in real estate in 2008 and it was so easy to sell real estate yeah. this is after the 08 crisis and everything this right. is this is during 08 this is 2008 january i got laid off from the oil rig in may i closed my first deal i actually closed two on the same day in may it was like may 31st and uh just started selling the hell Boom, it just said uh, oh just started it. crushing it right and you may say well how why when what imagine a market and you're a real estate agent right and all of a sudden you're here in fort lauderdale right and real estate prices go down 50 percent oh prime territory now yeah how, how 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 easy would it be to sell real estate as a real estate agent if prices went down 50 percent right now or any time in history that i mean but my put my challenge would be is why did it drop is it just is it across the board more, or is just a, a pocket that's just dropped to fort lauderdale because if it was just Fort Lauderdale no, no, that went, dropped, then I would say it wouldn't, maybe I it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a pocket. Oh, right? okay. It wouldn't this be a pocket. Yeah. If, if some if something go, if 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 the market goes, the markets are local, right? And okay. so things are different in markets. Like for example, like as far as the country is concerned, we're negative year over year prices right now. Okay. Right? We're negative year over year prices. Um, but Fort Lauderdale hasn't even touched anywhere close. Oh, of to, course. <laughs> to, ne- to negative year over year prices, right? Right. And it's crazy because all the the Crash Brothers, <laughs> we'll the Crash them, Brothers. Yeah, the Crash we won't Brothers. say their names, but yeah. we know who they are, right? People who people who put out this stuff about the the housing market's going to crash worse than two thousand eight and all this. The thing is, is that probably end of January ish or whatever, right? Prices hit bottom, and prices are up. Prices are way up, and prices are up from that point. On we're, we're positive, so we enter January coming down. Right towards okay. the end of January, we hit a bottom. Right, right, and now just about every market is up higher than they were in January first. Like okay. we're positive on the year right now, price wise. We were positive last year from January to January. Okay, right, and now we're positive from January to now. Right now, you're referencing obviously you're referencing post pandemic pe- period, right? I'm, talking about right now right now so wait a minute because i know me and you watch the same news channels mm-hmm. right fox msnbc and everything like yep. that and there's a lot of fear porn going on they right now talk about this right every time i see i like, mean but well we're on a recession right now am i right that's that's the fear porn that's going on right now we're in a recession horrible time to be go back, investing go, go back go back and look at history okay and look okay. at all the recessionary periods Okay. And look at what real estate prices did and what mortgage rates did during recessionary periods. Mortgage rates went down and prices went up. Even back in even back in the late seventies, right? We had okay. four years of double digit appreciation in that run up of, of inflation that caused the twenty percent mortgage rates in the late seventies, right? right? Everybody okay. talks about the twenty. Oh, I remember it was eighteen <laughs> percent, right? right? Okay. If you look at appreciation every year through that, we had four years of double digit appreciation four years, which means things doubled basically in four years, right? Okay. And then and then everybody says what? What goes up must come, come down. down. Right? It's right, up, it's up, it's up. Right. Guess what happened? The next year, I think it was 1980 or 81 was the next year that it came back to single digit appreciation. It was 7%. After being double that, after at double, 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 and okay. then seven. And then, and then it went to three, and then it stayed around that one to 2% for a while, but we never saw a negative year in appreciation for real estate. That doesn't mean that, hmm. that doesn't mean that it didn't dip down. It, during one of the years and then come back come up, right and, back and, up and, and end positive for the year. Right. I'm not saying that it didn't have any kind of correction, but what I'm saying is, is from January 1 to January 1 to January 1 to January 1, uh, appreciation, a positive, 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 positive through wow. that. In, in, the, uh, 
let's see, when was it? I think it was in the late 80s or so. There was another, it was it was a three-year double-digit run. Same thing. People were saying the same thing. What goes up must come down. What happened? Positive, positive, positive. There was a couple years that were even. There was like two okay. or three years that were that were zero, but it didn't go negative. Then we finally saw a two-year period where right. it was down 1% and then 0%. That was 90 and 91. So over two okay. years collectively, it was 1%. down 1% negative. Which is okay? nothing, right? Nothing. This is going back to 1940. So then, so then you come to 2000, to the 2000s. Right. We had three, I want to say three years of double-digit appreciation. Okay. Or 08. Okay. Right? And then we had four years, I want to say it was four years of negative appreciation. After 08. I think it was nine, eight, nine, ten. It might have been nine, mm-hmm. ten, eleven. So it was, I think it was eight, nine, ten, whatever. It was, right. It might have been seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, whatever. It was one, it was right there in that period. It was four, I want to say, negative years. Right. Right. Um, and then here lately, we had two double-digit years. We had 2022, uh, 2021 and 2022. We had two double-digit appreciation years. Appreciation? We, yeah, we're appreciated double wow. digits, right? 2021, 2022. Right. And now everybody's saying the same thing. What goes up must come down. Well, look at history. Every time we've had <laughs> double-digit appreciations, it hasn't. we haven't seen It only dropped negativity. one, right. Like you said, those two previous years only dropped 1% and 0% after the four-year run-up. And right? it wasn't right after. Those 0% years were like like five years after the run-up. After right. the run-up, it stayed like 7, 3, 2, 2. Um, people just have a misconception about real estate because of 08. 08, 08. Has, I mean, 08 was bad, though, 08 was man. bad because the recession was driven by the mortgage, the way Back that mortgages were done. It, it, like it, it, it was driven by real estate. Real estate is what brought the recession. But all these other recessions are brought by um, inflation and the hike of interest rates and world wars and different things like that. Not Which is what estate. we're experiencing now. You know, interest rate going up. There's a pro- Exactly. Pop- and go back and look at the recessions that, that were caused by that and look at the behavior of real estate and mortgage rates during those times. Right? Right. True. And so okay. what we have now, since we're on the subject, is the perfect storm coming. Right. Oh, and, and I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> come on. Get it spicy now, Ricky. Come on. Talk I'll to tra- me. I'll tell you what that is. Uh-huh. Um, I saw an article and it said 98% of millennials want to be homeowners, right? 98%. 98%. This because that's the by, American dream for a long period well, of time. But, you know, the younger generation, you know, um, we don't know when a generation is going to come along and say, we just want to rent or we want to do this or we want to camp or who right. knows what people are going to do, right? Right. Well, 98%. This was a survey done by Zonda. Mm-hmm. And, and so there's 72 million millennials, right, in the country. The largest demographics right, right. now. And uh-huh. so And so I started to think, okay... Let me, this, it piqued my curiosity. Right. So okay. I said, okay, Google, tell me what the median age of first time home buyers are. Mm. Right. Right. So in 2021, it was 33 years old, and last year it was 36. 33. Oh, so increasing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, well, you we'll know, see. But I, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I, I look at that and I think, okay, the age range of first time home buyers are 33 to 36 let's just say right, right. just based on that okay and that's the age of millennials okay right okay. you've got a group of 72 million of them that say 98% want to be a homeowner because they want to build their own equity instead of someone else's that's the number one reason okay right right so i keep going on this rabbit hole and i think okay birth rates let me check this out Right. And if you go back 33 years from today, which is 1990. Right. There was a massive. Let me repeat. Massive (laughs) spike in birth rates. Right. So we have we have we have right now. And and it goes like this. It's it's this. And here's 1990. Right. Here's the birth rates, you know. Um, you know, 85, 86, 87, Just 88, rising 89, up. 90, Boom. Right? And then it stays right here for 16 years till 2006, and then it drops off dramatically. Right, okay? okay. So we have the largest group of people turning 33 than we've ever seen in our life Looking this year. Home buyers. Right? This year. And so 33, mm. in my mind, is the beginning is the beginning age, because it's 33 to 36, right. is the beginning age of a first-time home buyer. And so, and so I keep mm. on thinking, okay, we have more pent up demand for housing because here's the thing, which I can agree Look, to, it, to, it, but I want to challenge that. I'm gonna let you finish your thought though. 
and 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 I can tell you a lot of predictable spots. Mm-hmm. I'll just mention a couple. In in April twenty eighth, two thousand twenty, what were you doing? April twenty eighth of two thousand and twenty. Mm-hmm. So the pandemic rolled out March third. Mm-hmm. So this is about a month and a half after the pandemic. Yeah, I lost my job. I was home. I was basically uh, brainstorming on starting up my we were media forced to be company. at home right during that time. Right. They, they shut the economy down. No economy. Right. Uh, they shut businesses down. The only thing open was Walmart and Target or whatever. Essential so could, businesses. That's it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And we were basically told, "Hey, you have to stay home till this thing blows over." Oh, till we figure it A out. A lot of uncertainty. You thought your 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 family was. You didn't know if your family was yeah, gonna I die, didn't. if you were gonna die. You know <laughs> no, gonna right. <laughs> I post a video on April twenty eighth, two thousand twenty, and I said, "When the economy reopens, real estate's gonna surge." You predicted it, this. It, no predictive it, analysts or it's nothing. Still, it's still on YouTube, right? It's that day on April twenty eighth before the economy opened, right? We're all still in our house scared, and I said, "The real estate's about to blow up, y'all." Okay. And so how Damn. did I so how did I know this? Well, number one, I've been around long enough and I went through the previous crash to realize that when transactions retract, it's only building demand. And there's gonna be a boom and when it comes out the other side. And when I saw the pandemic, the shutdown caused a retraction of transactions, I said, Oh my God. People are gonna be coming out and full then, fledged. And then yeah. I saw stimulus happen. And I said, it's about to be <laughs> over. Yeah. And guess what happened? Free bands everywhere. Yeah. Guess what happened? <laughs> What's that? We saw the largest real estate serves that we've ever seen in our life that lasted for a year and a half. Multiple offers, more than 100000 over asking price. People couldn't get listings. We had 6 million but, transactions, right? But, Ricky, wait a minute. You, again, you you... We've seen the Facebook laying off the hundred, you know, thousands of people. Amazon, big box retailers, mm-hmm. right? Unemployment is right around the corner as far as double digit numbers potentially, right? Potentially, yeah. So, again, I'm not. I'm. We're in the same planet here. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you're 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 telling me everything that's been contra- contradictory to what the pundits and the media outlets are saying here that. The storm. You even said it yourself. The storm is coming. Mm -hmm. So how can you sit here and tell us? "Ah, No, don't worry. You know it's perfect time to get into real estate, man. But you don't know what kind of storm I'm talking about. Ah, you said. (laughs) So 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 let's fast forward, right? I predicted the surge that happened. Mm -hmm. Let's fast forward. Um, I also put out videos about when rates go up, we're going to see a huge shift. Right. I, I mean, that's all just that. That's very telegraphed. I mean, if you couldn't see that coming, then that's not even worth saying, oh, I predicted this. Wow. OK. But in the fall, I said, we're going to see multiple offers again. Right. In right. January, really late December, we started seeing multiple offers again. And now over the last 30 days, we went from 2.7 offers per listing to 3.2 offers per listing. Slowly growing. Right, Damn. right. Okay, okay. Um, like I say, prices um, bottomed out 60 days ago. We're higher now than we were January 1st, not to mention the bottom. Right, right? okay. Um, and we are we have lower inventory. You know, in the 80s, we had two, always in the 80s, the whole time. Right. We had two to three million houses for sale at any given time during the 80s. 80s. Damn. 80s. Okay? 80s. Yeah, that 30% 20, less 30 pop- 30 years ago. 30% less population, 30% less houses, right? Oh. 2 2 to 3 million homes for sale at any given time. You know what we have right now? 800,000 maybe. And that's counting pending deals. You take the pending deals out, we're at like 550, we're around 500,000 active listings. So there is a demand. Housing shortage, see, it, it, uh, it, safe it, to say. See, it, it's simple economics, bro. It's, okay. it's simple economics, supply and demand. If you Period, have more demand right. <laughs> you have supply, okay. it's not hard to figure out. If you look at a chart of of, uh, of um, inventory, housing inventory, right. you look back from 1980, here we are at 2 to 3 mil. It goes up to 4 million houses in 08. Right. And then it comes down, and now we are where we are here, well Just, under a million Teetering. Under, well, not even half of the houses we had for sale back in the 80s. Okay? Damn. Now, now there's why, more people now. It's so 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 even if you had half the, the properties for sale back in the 80s, right? Um, like that's one thing, but now we're 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 there, but in today's world where like you say, there's 30, 40% more people, 
there's more homes that exist. Right. And okay. we have not even close to half of the inventory we had in the 80s. Okay. Wow. I predicted the, the surge happening and other predictions. I'm not, you know, going to go into all the different things, but right. I just want to talk about this one because this one's big. We were, we're moving towards this place where we have more 33 year olds than we've ever had right. by far. And, and they're going to be 35 next year and 36 the year after. And next year, we're going to have more 33-year-olds entering and then 33. Right, okay. This I is first-time home buyers. This doesn't even count people that are relocating, people that are investing, people that just want to buy a house. This is just one little sector of the market that's just a, a, just part of the way this is right? Right. People that are – there's 85% of mortgages in America are sitting under 4% interest, right? And interest rates are 6.3. Right now. So if you right. have a house and your interest rate is – 3.2, are you going to sell, even if you kind of want to, are you going to sell it and move somewhere and buy a house no, at a 6.3? No. Right, you're doubling so, so, your... So, so, so the mortgage rates going up has right. killed inventory because these people that are sitting on these low mortgage rates... They're staying in it. They're staying in their house. Right. Even right. if they want to move, they're not going to move. Doesn't make any sense. Because they are sitting on such good interest rates. Right. They're not going to trade that for twice the interest. So that's killing inventory. We'll get into builders. Builders are down 30 40%. Right, they couldn't right. even keep up before. Not to mention the wave of first-time home buyers that are fixing a hit. So here's where the rubber hits the road. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're getting a lot like multiple offers are happening all over the country. There right. are some markets where it's not happening. Okay? Right, I mean it's not all across the like, board. Like right. my market, right? I'm not getting multiple offers on my listings in in Alabama, right? But okay. like, but I but I read data, statistics. I talk to all my agents all over the country all the time. I'm right. boots on the ground. As right? you should yeah, in real like, estate. Like, 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 like a lot of these guys, right? <laughs> they're not boots on the ground, right? They're just trying to come up with, they're trying to twist the data into, oh, prices are negative year over year. Let's do a headline. First time prices go down in 11 years. You know what the Wall Street Journal said? Which we're going to get you, into. You, go you, ahead. You know what they said? Go ahead. They said prices go negative for the first, go down for the first time in 11 years, right? Because it went negative year over year. Right. And under it, the little subtitle, it said existing home sales uh, increase 14.5% in January or February or whatever month it was. Right. It's like, what are you trying to tell me? The, the title is prices are down first time in 11 years. The subtitle is sales are up 14.5%. <laughs> you like, confusing the it? hell yeah, out of me. I was about to say, which one is it? Is it the left, the right, up or down? Or what? I mean, but, you know, this, which you gone, gone into this Wall Street Journal here. I want to ask this final question before we get into the meat and potatoes. You, we look. I've looked at this article here. If you can see here, it says the building boom is prolong prolonging mm. market pain. Okay. Which, again, pushing on what I've just uh, uh, shared with you here, how the building boom has pushed unemployment around to this lowest level in more than fifty years, which is perplexing investors who want to see the Fed switch course on interest rates. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the interest rates still going up and everything, but yep. construction, construction spending, and employment have risen to new records this year, as you have just shared with us, right? And it's basically how stating how the mark, the construction market, is on the rise mm -hmm. right now because they can't keep up with demand, but we all, you just referenced to the pandemic how there were supply chain issues. We all know about that. We've all experienced it and everything like that. Interest rates going on, so it costs more to build, mm -hmm. right? Because supplies cost more and everything like that. And the fact that, again, a lot of jobs are switching to four-day work week, cutting back hours. People are losing a job. So there's even uncertainty. And, again, like you final point, you've mentioned those that have that prime rate, they're staying, they're staying put. Mm -hmm. No reason to, mm -hmm. you know, go into something higher. Yeah. So, you know, tell me, is this something that the government, because I'm asking the same question in many different ways, and I want to get this answer from you. Is this something the government is intentionally doing to sort of manipulate as the data? As far as rates go? As far as, as far as the information going out, because we're also in a world where yeah. information is there's misinformation too. Yeah. So if everything you're sharing with me is positive, but everything they're saying is negative, is it really the institutions that's spreading this fear porn there's two, intentionally? There's two there's two schools there, right? There's mm -hmm. two camps. Okay. Okay. There's the overall economy, okay? Right. Which which, which has its uncertain points, right? As right. far as layoffs and recession and, and stuff like that. Because there's a big difference in interest rates and mortgage rates. 
Okay? Interest rates and mortgage rates. Big difference, right? Interest rates, like the Fed fund rate, right? right? It affects credit cards, car loans, uh, oh. uh, 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 equity lines of credit, things of that nature. Okay. Right? But it doesn't affect the 30-year fixed mortgage. Oh, so you got to separate them. You have to separate them. A lot of people co- combine them. Yeah. Right. I see yeah. what you're saying. Okay. And so people think, oh, the feds are going to go up on, uh, yeah. on on rates, so mortgage rates. No, it's not, right? If you look at history, again, just look at a chart. Okay. Pull up a chart that has the 10-year treasury, that has inflation, and that has 30-year fixed. Right. And look at how correlated they are, right? And, mm. and, and look at the Fed fund rate and look how uncorrelated it is to the other three. And so the reason why the 30-year fix is not correlated to the Fed fund and more correlated to the 10-year treasury, which is tied more to inflation, because people investors want to make money on their dollar even if the dollar is increasing or decreasing in value. Right, okay. that's why they're calling they an investor. Their, yeah, right? They want to put their money in. <laughs> right. They don't want to make less than what the dollar is appreciating itself if they just left it in the bank. Makes sense, okay? right? So same thing with 30-year fix. If I can put my money in a 10-year treasury and get 3% or buy a, buy a mortgage on the second market and get 3% that's riskier than a, bond, than a treasury or a bond, where right. am I going to put my money? I'm going to put my money in the uh, bond or the treasury, right? right where there's okay. no risk, but I'm getting the same return. So that's why the 30-year fix is more investor-driven, and, and there has to be a spread between the 10-year treasury and 30-year fixed so that mm-hmm. the investors get, a, get a re- an extra return on their money for risking their money a little bit over here, right? Okay. And, okay. So, and so that's why, that's why it's tied more to the 10-year treasury than the Fed. The fund. actual the, – the inflation is tied to the mortgage rates. I see what yeah. you're saying. And so, and so, and so it's, it's kind of tied a little bit because – but it has an adverse effect because when the Fed raises rates, their their objective is is to de, is to bring create, down inflation, create, create deflation, right? Right. Well, when deflation comes down, mortgage rates follow, and so so in the beginning, when the Feds begin raising rates, right? It, you know, mortgage rates go up in the beginning. In the beginning, the, in the but beginning, it stabilizes. The it plan. stabilizes, and okay. then and then as you know, it, you know, you know, they're here, and then the Fed rates go up. Well, the mortgage rates go up too because oh, now we realize inflation is higher. And if the Fed rate goes up, then that affects the ten-year Treasury. So in the beginning, during one of these periods where they start raising, right. it goes up. But then once it levels out, then the Feds continue raising rates. Well, that raising rates makes inflation come down, and the and the tenure and the th- uh, the thirty year fix starts to dwindle started down. Started to come with, down with started it. to dwindle down with inflation. So every inflation and CPI report that we've had hasn't been phenomenal, but it's been better each time. Has been a little better, a little better, a little better. And May tenth in ten okay. days, we're going to have another one that's going to be the big one. That's going to show a great year over year improvement in terms of inflation, and that's going to create downward pressure on the 30-year fix. So right, right now we're sitting okay. on 6.3, something like that, as far as the 30-year fixed average for the country right this second. Okay. Well, we have more demand. In my mind, we have more pent-up demand for a lot of reasons. Number one, just the first-time na- home buyers. The natural first-time home buyer group. Right. Bigger than we've ever seen ever. We don't even know. We don't. We we, we, we have, <laughs> that's still we, prime. We market, haven't right? <laughs> even. We've seen nothing yet when it comes to this. Then you've got all these people that have been sitting in these same houses because they have low interest rate and forced to stay in there and just building and, equity. And they're just they're, huh? Building equity. They're building equity, yeah. but the thing is, is they're just dying to move. Because they've been in the same house. They've been forced to stay in the same house. And they're like, still forced in a way because the rates are so low. That's what I'm saying. Right. I see what you're saying. But the more time goes by, like these people do want to move. But but they don't want to pay 6.3% interest. Right? So as mm. inflation continues to dwindle down, 30-year fix is going to follow. <gasps> more of the people would go in because now I say, hey, I'll sell at that price at then. I'll, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll sell. I'll, I'll give up my, you know, my 41 and get into a 5.5%. I can deal with this mortgage payment at 5.5%. I'm not going to do it at 6.3, right. but at 5.5, I, I, can, I, deal with I it. can deal with it. So what's going to happen is a perfect storm. Like, we think we have demand now because we're getting multiple offers, right? Like, there's more properties pending than are active right now, right, in, in a lot of markets. there's mm. th- Right here in Fort Lauderdale, there's three months' worth of inventory right now. 
which means that the amount of properties that are pending that are going to close and how many closings have happened right. over the last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, right. there's only enough inventory to cover three more months on the market right this second. After that, is that's it, right. right. Well, and what happens is new listings come on the market to kind of keep it going. But right, okay. The new listings are lower than like 2021 and 22. Like here's 21 and 22 for new listings coming on the market. Here's 23. Like new listings, because nobody's selling. Somebody's selling. Nobody's Every selling. Interest rate so high. And so this is what this is where the perfect storm is coming when all this pent up demand and no inventory at all oh enters into a period when inflation starts to cool and gets down into the fives. It's going to be like a tsunami of people coming oh out of the woodwork God. to buy houses. This is right? when real estate agents eat, huh? And you so, guys. And so my, my, my prediction is uh-huh. that we see another double-digit year in prices this year. Year-over-year year growth. Year-over-year. Year. From January 1 to January 1, I predict another double-digit year because there's no inventory, and we're going to have the largest amount of demand we've ever seen with decreasing mortgage rates. Now, the fear. Okay, I'll give you some. I'll give you some fear. Okay, don't spend, don't paint, paint all roses for everybody now. Okay, and, and that is this: uh-huh. as this unfolds, and you have all these people come out the woodworks, and sh- real estate prices shoot up. Right, what does that create? A second wave of inflation. Because a e- second wave. Because in essence, that is inflation. That's prices. It, it's too. <gasps> oh, it, it just automatically spikes up prices. It's, it's right? too few. It's too few dollars chasing too. Uh, too, too, too few dollars, too many dollars, dollars chasing too, too few, few goods, demand, right? right? And so, and so, when you have all these people buying these houses, it's gonna make prices are gonna go up because it's a seller's market at this yes, point. Yes, right? yes, okay. and it's gonna get a lot worse. And so, the second wave of inflation does what to mortgage rates? Brings them down? No, when inflation goes up, mortgage rates are gonna go up. Oh, at the same, see, I see what you're saying. See, see, okay. see, mortgage rates follow inflation. And so, but to a degree, like you mentioned earlier, right? Not necessarily per, per, all the way. No, yeah, really, really closely correlated, even okay. more so closely correlated to the 10-year treasury. If you look at like a 40-year chart, you'll see that uh, 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 1.75 to, to 2% spread between right. a 10-year treasury and 30-year fixed. And it's like exact that whole time through like a 30, 40 year period right. is correlated. They're so pretty much riding very, together. Very, very correlated to the 10 year treasury, but that's driven by inflation because again, investors want a return on their dollar over what they could get if they just left their money in the bank. Right. 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 So, so, and that's inflation, how much a dollar's worth. Pretty much, right. So, so I believe that there's a really good chance we're going to see a second wave of inflation, which is going to spike mortgage rates back up. And then we're going to be right back into this vicious cycle that we're playing, this little game that we're playing here right with now. no inventory, people that need houses, builders are going to, you know, wow. slow down building, interest mortgage rates go back up, you know, and then so it's it, a perpetual it, cycle. And, and then and then and then the feds will raise rates to to combat inflation again, and then that'll make 30 year fix come down, <laughs> then we'll see another tsunami, right? It's right. like it's like the, here here's the thing. We need housing inventory. That's the, that's the answer. That's the answer to this whole thing. But you can't even build. An, I mean, there's only a certain amount of land, certain, you know, an influx of people and which, you know what? Hold on. I want to let's let's get off of real estate for a second here. All right. I want to because the, the, the viewers are now saying, wow, man, you've 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 uh, turned our mindset on real estate. So I want to go into your community now. You are I, I'm assuming prepping your community and even prepping yourself for this potential storm that's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to talk about your zero to diamond community, Mm -hmm. which you're, you know, which by the way entails and and, and it also includes a 60 day challenge, Mm -hmm. which correct me if I'm wrong, has a 98.8, almost a 99% success rate. Mm -hmm. Now, I've taken some courses. I've had people come onto the show. Nobody has been able to go ahead and produce a receipt like that. Okay. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, if you could share a little bit about how were you able to go ahead and have such a very high success rate for commu- your community. And also because of everything you just shared up until this point, is this the prime time for your community or anybody to get into real estate right now? Yeah, so um, that's good. Two questions. So the community itself, um, 
just the storyline behind it, right? right? So so I made it, lost it, came back, right? In 2008, I came back, and I told you it was easy to sell properties, right? right? at that point. Made six-figure, going from the oil rig to make a six-figure in an office, air conditioning, right? <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I'll take this job I here. Like, right? I made it. Yeah. I, I can't believe this, right? <laughs> right. And um, then I just made more and more money every year. And by 2014, I had 100 deals for the first year, and I, that year was the number one REMAX agent in Alabama. And Damn. so I sold 100 properties every year since, just single agent, one assistant, right? Right, okay. So so I make it, I lose it, I come back, it takes me six years to get to the top. Right. Then I'm there for three years in a row. Crushing before, it. Before I even think about or have the audacity to go write a book or try to teach anybody how to do anything, right? Mm-hmm, okay. And so... There's a lot of people that have been selling for two years, sold 19 properties, and now they've got a course for 500 bucks, right? And they're an expert, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so just to take it a step further, I was like, I'm going to make a course. I'm going to teach everybody how to do all this the unique way that I did it for free. And free? The re- and the reason that I did free is because, um, number one, agents don't want to pay anything for anything, right? <laughs> number one but, but, the, but the, i mean there's a high failure rate so i could assume why but, but the biggest ahead. but the biggest reason was is like for me the agents that really want coaching and stuff mm-hmm. they're super desperate they're they're just struggling they really want this yeah. this is their dream but they can't get it going so they're just missing the piece that'll I get them over like the hump i would be taking advantage of struggling people oh, right okay I don't like the way it made me feel, number one. Number two was is that I know that if I go free and I create something that's better than what people are paying for, then I'm going to have the biggest name in real estate after a while. And so that was the overall goal. That's the objective, to, okay. Was to, was to reduce the failure rate through my unique way of, of building a real estate business as an agent and then taking that and exposing it to as many people as possible so that hopefully I can reduce the failure rate. And through that build a massive brand that feeds okay. other businesses. And okay. so that that was the goal was to create a brand mm. that feeds businesses, right? Not that the brand is a business, that the brand feeds businesses. Feeds businesses, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And th- is that how you came up with the size zero to diamond? Uh, diamond uh, is a million bucks a year in the Remax system, right? So and that's what I did. I went from zero to diamond. Mm. Right? So okay. that was the name of the first book and um and then I got zero to diamond.com and I just developed a coaching program where I was doing weekly calls for the group. I was doing one on ones. Um, and I'm this cra- could be in normal people from like your soccer moms to your dads wanting a, a part time hustle or just a young kid wanting to learn real estate. Your community involves all ranges and demographics. So. Absolutely. And other countries. Right. I've got wow. agents from all over the world that have found success with zero to diamond. That, so. I, all free. Mm hmm. And so let me ask you a question. Now that what you just shared, which is the second question, I just want to reiterate it, is that, you know, because of the perfect storm coming right now, are you prepping your community for? Yeah. Yeah. I had a call this morning at eight o'clock. We start the 60 day challenge every, you know, three or four months as a group. So uh, I had the call this morning to start it this week. We're starting it. So I I had a call with with the group. Um, I did a, I did a YouTube market update last week just to give my two cents on this perfect storm thing coming in. Okay. Um, so, uh, w- what's very interesting about just the backstory a little bit is that I was making a million bucks a year mm-hmm. and, um, um, I started doing zero to diamond, which, which I lost a hundred thousand for two years doing it. Right. Trying to kick st- kickstart it uh-huh. and bootstrap. Okay, uh-huh. okay. So like I'm I'm sitting here losing six figure, spending about thirty. I'm now I'm spending like sixty plus percent of my time on something that loses six figure. Meanwhile, kind of neglecting hey. my seven figure business for two years. Wow, it was tough. Yeah, I can imagine. It's but like, er, but wow, I would get messages from agents saying this is working for me. I'm crushing it. I'm getting listings. I'm da 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 da. So they're giving you the praise they're and giving everything. Me the praise, and I'm like, okay, if this like I, I'm believing this, you know. And I was getting called to speak. I started speaking and stuff okay. like that. Okay. Um, and then everybody would come up after the speeches and stuff, and I was like, this is gonna be big. It's there's no way it's not going to Although be you're losing money. Losing money. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. I found something here. So finally, that next year, the third year, I made I made 500 and I spent 200 that year. So okay. I made 300 okay. and then uh, and then I made a meal but I started making a meal every year after Boom. that. Yeah. 
doing the coaching thing. So then that that basically replaced my sales income. Okay. I was still selling. I was still selling up to last year. And now I'm still selling. I took one foot out. My dad handles the day-to-day. Right. The, okay. the, the, the clients, the listings, the showings, all that. He handles all that. Right. So that I can continue building the brand and building all these other ancillary Coaching businesses. Coaching and everything like that. Coaching, mortgage, brokerage, sales, investment. And yeah. just touch on every avenues of real estate. Yeah. Okay. Which now I want to get into, you know, you started off as a roofer, which God bless you. Okay, I, I could never. <laughs> my dad, my dad was a roofer, right? Right. And so when you grow up in it, you don't really know any different. Oh my God! Okay. But the tar and the heat it didn't bother the, me. Oh God! It bro. didn't bother me. You know, I grew up in it. I, I I loved it. Honestly, I loved roofing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a euphoric feeling, man. Um, you know, when you work really hard and you 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 know you you do this masterpiece, you know, and you, right? You step okay. Back, you know, you're on the road looking back at the house, and you're like, I just did that. You know what I mean? You have a sense of pride. There's it, it, it's right. it's like art, honestly. Okay. Because there there there's a there's a bit of art art to it, um, which kind of sounds weird talking about. I was going to say, so it's not come just slapping on the tar. No, or thing. no, 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 no. Because um, we didn't do a whole lot. We did do some tar roofs, but even those were. You know, we're fun to learn how to do, but the shingle roofs and the metal roofs on the residential houses with the architectural, you know what I mean? Right. And all the cuts in the roof and everything that you have to basically lay it out where it looks amazing and it's also okay. not going to leak. Mm. There's an art to that, you know? So, um, no, it, it was cool. and But I knew I didn't want to do it forever. Right. right. Like you said, you wanted to scale. It was like, how can I be that $100 million man? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, outside within real estate, which I want to now touch on your blueprint because you've already, you know, laid the foundation as far as you entering in the world of real estate, building out your zero to diamond community and everything like that. So if you could let, uh, you know, what was the plan? Well, the plan in building your blueprint was like you say, you wanted to be the hundred million dollar man outside of roofing but my question is you know that was the plan how did you build the blueprint you know was it primarily okay i'm going to get into real estate i'm gonna be a real estate agent crush it and after i crush it i'm going to now branch off into every other field here was that no the build no 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 the the idea was you know definitely roofing is not my career Right. That was number one, right? <laughs> right? Number one. So that's why I went to college in the first place, because I wanted to go try to do something else. So when I In went, real estate or just something else? Something else. else. I didn't know I was going to do real estate. Okay. Yeah, I went All to right. college because I had a scholarship, and I started learning business, and I was just doing my uh, – the beginning classes, whatever it's called. Uh-huh. And um, – um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to major in, right? I was just – I just put – Like most college kids. I just put business down. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. And then, you know, I went to two schools, and then I went to the University of Alabama. I failed a history class. And, uh, <laughs> I remember you told me that. And, after I, after and I was like, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm, my, my, my mom's spending, I don't remember how much it was, like two or three grand a semester. Right. And housing and everything. I was like, I need to, I don't want to go make money. I don't want to sit here and spend money. I'm sitting here failing classes. That yeah, makes sense. <laughs> so there was, a, there was a college there, Shelton State, and uh, there was, they had a real estate class. And there was a, one of my roommates was like, I'm going to get my real estate license. I'm like, all right, I'll do that too. So when I got my real estate license, when, when I took the class, right. I didn't realize what all was involved. Like when you, take, <laughs> when, you, when you take the class and you pass the class, you've got a year to take your test, or you have to start all over. The real estate, right? Okay. Your state, your state test. Once you pass the class, okay. And it's different per state. So, but then at that point, you have so long. Thirty, I think it was ninety days. Once you pass your test, to actually sign with the broker. Okay. And then you have six months from when you pass your test to take your post license course, a thirty hour post license like course, like a continuing education yep, type yep. of thing. Yeah, and okay. then you've got continuing ed every every uh, two years. Mm-hmm. And I was in class thinking, man, dude, this, I thought like you got, I thought you passed your test and then it was like something they stamped like a motorcycle license. Yeah. Your and you're driver, off to the races on your, on your driver's <laughs> license. And now you can sell real estate for the rest of your life and make right. money or whatever. I didn't realize there was all these fees and all this, all these classes and all these responsibilities and timelines. And right. Stuff. I was like, I don't even know if I want to do this. No, I'm in this <laughs> thing. All that, I'm really committing here. Right. So I got out of the, I, t- I passed the class. I was like, I don't know if I want to do it. 
I came home from Tuscaloosa and uh, got a roofed house. I, I, I roofed like two days, and I was like, all right, I'm going to take the car. I'm going to take the test. I'm going right. to try this real estate thing. Right. I'm not going to do this for sure. So the the thought going in uh-huh. was I want to help people, mm. right? I want to help first-time home buyers. I want to help people, right, with this. Right. So my, my thing, like, I remember even when I was, like, a real little kid, like, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. I, I had this thought like, I'm going to grow up. I'm going to make a lot of money, a lot of money. And wow, I'm going to okay. turn around and help a lot of people. That was don't my, know how, but just I'm going to do it. Had no idea how. I just knew that I was going to do something. I was going to work really hard. I was going to make a lot of money because we grew up poor. And like I watched my dad and mom like live paycheck to paycheck and stuff. Right. And, you know, that affects you. And you start to get into this mindset. And I was like, I'm going to go out there and make a lot of money, like a lot, a lot of money. And then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to help people. Right. I had no idea how I was going to do it. So I've always been in this, like help people, help people mindset from when I was little. So when I got into real estate, I was like, I'm going to help first time home buyers. Oh, that was your focus. That was my focus. Okay. Right. So I got in and, um, I worked with like two first time home buyers and I was like, I do not want to work with first time home buyers. (laughs) He's like, yeah, I want to help him. I want to do everything from. Uh, you guys uh, suck. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah I want to work with you, right? Because there's also a level of efficiency, efficiency to it. Right, right. Okay. And the thing is, is if if you're not working efficient, you can't help the most people. Right. Right. You got to be the best person. You, you got to be running have, on all cylinders. You have to be super yeah. efficient, or you're not going to get there. Good point. Good right? point. Okay. So it wasn't about the helping. It was the. There's going to be plenty of people that want to help people. You know what I mean? Like As always. Plenty yeah. of agents to go help you guys. Let me go over here and let me be the most efficient and sell beachfront condos. So I specialized in gulf front, beachfront condos and, oh. and houses and vacation properties of people that live all over the country that come down to Alabama and buy beachfront properties there. That, that area in the panhandle like mm-hmm. you was mentioning. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. So, like, I'm the condo guy. So, like, and that's where the money's at, right? So you niche down. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, ni- I niched it. Right. So no commercial, no multifamily. I buy. I buy commercial now. I buy multifamily. I own all that, but I never really got. I sold a little bit, but I right. focused on Gulf Front condos as far as an agent goes. My real estate agent business. Right. Okay. So my thing was to help people. That was the blueprint, and the thing was to make a ton of money and turn around and help people one day with it. But I didn't know. I had no idea that I was going to make all these millions selling properties and then turn around and help agents. I had wow. no idea that that was going to be. I had no the the thing. All, all I wanted the whole time was just to make a million dollars a year, right? That was <laughs> all. If I could just make a million, even I could, even if I could just make a million bucks in my bank account, even if it took like four years to save up a million, even if I wasn't making a million a year, You're just good. to have a million dollars, right? Right. Because like my dad, my mom never saw a million bucks, right? Uh, you seen the paycheck, the paycheck yeah. living, like you just mentioned, right? And so, so and so uh, when I got in in two thousand two, right? Okay. And I made that meal, and then I lost that meal, right? Uh-huh. And then I came back, and then it took me, so from 02 to 17, that's 15 years. Right. Before I actually made a million dollars in a year, right? That's a journey. Right. That's a journey, yes. And so when I finally did that, then I started, th- and so the goal was always to make a million a year or to make a million. Right. And then you think, when you do it, it's like, okay. Two, well, guess five. What? No, 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 no. no. Huh? W- w- once, you, once you get there. Your life doesn't change. I got up the next day. Uh, I still and go to even work, work harder. Yeah, work hard. I'm even working saying. harder now, right? Okay. This dream that I wanted my whole life. It's like, wow, and, you just kick started something yeah. else. Right? And, 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 and now I got to work even harder that I made it. And so. Wow. It, you know what? Hold on. You're detracting a lot more viewers here, but I see the point you're trying to make. No, but. But, that, but that's actually, what drove me to, right. to, 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 to get into the coaching world and start doing social media because I didn't touch social media to build my real estate business. So no YouTube, no nothing. Instagram, nothing. Just nothing. Just door to door still. The calls. Whole way calls and emails. Which, by the way, I want to talk this, which. Before I get into the second question, second question of about how did you fund your blueprint, you know, just very something different about your platform which anybody who have not had a chance to follow ricky on his uh, social media definitely check him out on in instagram Wait, what you do you go through live demonstrations of sales calls mm-hmm. you know what what started that like you know not many well, people would 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 use that tactic well honestly what other tactics are there 
I mean, you have the tactics of, you know, like the ebooks, the showing you the post success of the sale. Uh, you mean, you possibly, mean the coaching business? Yeah, and just oh, yeah, demonstrating, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, it's maybe, you know, yeah, I see that, that kind of stuff. And most of the time you look at the coach and they never even sold real estate. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm in the field. You actually call, you call clients, they mm-hmm. go through the actual sales call. Right, and you show it right here, right there. Every on week the I do live calls. Every week I do live calls. So there's on no my, excuses. No, no, no. Every week I do live calls that I don't have to make. I do it. I do it for to show people how easy and fun it is. And then I'll clip. The, the, it's on YouTube. It stays on there as a live. It's totally live. And right. Then, um, and then I'll clip those and, and make other you know content out of it or whatever. But um, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, well, that, but, well, but my question is, what else is there? How else do you build your business was my question. If you're a real estate agent, how else do you build your business? That's a very good question. I mean, I'm putting myself in the shoes of a real estate agent, right? Networking marketing, which now in social media, you'd have to find a way to, you know, I guess, find a field or a niche in that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's many different ways. I've always under the perception that real estate agents will have cards or the little things they hang on the doors, walk around the neighborhoods Mm -hmm. and put it on the door and things Mm -hmm. like that. And, um, but... Now, this is my mindset. I've never been in the real estate game, but you are sh- telling me that, hey, that model is long gone, and you it's have not long gone. See, the thing is, is one on one conversations. Real estate is a one on one conversation game. Okay. Right? The only thing between you as a real estate agent and millions of dollars in commissions are thousands of one on one conversations with people <sighs> in your market. Yeah, and it takes years to do that. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it takes years to do that. But okay, you want a million bucks or not? It's just that right. simple, it's right? It's that simple, right? <laughs> right? I got you. And a lot of people can't go through the years of doing it to actually get where they want to be because they just give up and they go do something else and don't make it either, right? So let me ask you: Is there's are you telling me there's no way of being an overnight success in real estate? No, no way. So you're gonna you're killing that philosophy right here, right, right here. now, right here. I'm not gonna sell the dream. I want to sell you is that if you bust your ass for three to five years, you can have a business where you don't make any more cold calls, but you sell fifty to hundred properties a year just doing a weekly email. For the rest of your life. Wait a minute. Hold on, man. I, I might have, I might switch careers for a second here. Hold on a second. But, 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 <laughs> but, but, but can you go through the three to five, though? See, that's the thing. That's the thing, right? That's, that's what people can't, they can't, can't go through. They right. can't wrap their head around that part. They, you know, they say they want it, but that's like, that's like saying you want to play varsity football when you're, when you're a freshman, yeah. right? You say, you say you want it. Yeah, that is right? true, Until right? you come out here and run some wind sprints and get ran over a couple of times, you like, probably oh, don't want it as bad yeah, as you thought you for did. This. Yeah, right. you know? It's the same thing. So I see that's why there's a night at such a high failure rate in the industry, right? Bingo. It takes all. Anybody can do it in real estate. Anybody. I'm talking every single person can succeed as a real estate agent. 100% of humans on earth. Really? Can, can, yes. A hundred percent. So what's the blueprint? Cause it, cause it's that easy, right? The problem is how long it takes to develop and you don't get paid today on what you do today. Right. Uh, delayed gratification. It's so delayed. Right. I see the seeds saying. you plant today might not come to fruition for years sometimes. Right. Sometimes they come to fruition in a month or two or three, something like that. So how do you convince students that enter your course that say, Hey, you know, this is the perfect industry to get into, but it's going to take some time. Listen, not a, peop- not a lot they, of people can subscribe pre- to that. They already have a preconceived notion of what this is going to be based on whatever they've seen on TV or YouTube or what their mom told them or whatever. Mm-hmm. They already have that preconceived notion. All, all I'm there to do is to try to help guide them through what they need to do day to day to get the ball rolling and help set those expectations that it's not going to happen overnight and you're going to have to grind it out. And a lot of them are like, oh, yeah, I knew it was going to be hard. Well, <laughs> right. you don't know how hard. Yeah, it's uh, a little more hard, harder. Right. hard you think times that by 20, and that's about how hard it's going to be. But I'm like, I'm here for you. When you run into those frustrating moments, call me. When you run into those moments that, you know, you're down or you're frustrated or disappointed or you lost a deal or you feel like you're not going anywhere, call me and tell me about it because that's what every single agent goes through. There's not one single agent that's, that's been successful that, right? that didn't go through that disappointing, frustrating moments in the first year or two. Nobody, right? Hmm. So, so let me ask you a question. You know, how did you fund? 
as you was going through these trials and tribulations, how did you fund this, bl- this blueprint of you being a real estate agent? How how did you go through? Because you're a father, you're married, you have houses. a family. Yeah. Oh, so that was. See, I met my daughter's three. I got married five years ago. So thank God I didn't get married. <laughs> right. It's like thank day, you, Lord. Right. right? Thank you, Jesus, that I didn't have a daughter or anything back then. Right. right. Um. And but also, what do you say for the single moms that you know, or the the ones have, that do I have, have kids. I have a lot of know? single moms, right? And right. the thing about it is, is that it may take a little longer for you than other agents to, to get there. Right. The thing is, is don't give up. If, if you can if you can have grandma watch the kids for three hours a week even to, to focus on your real estate business, and that's all you got. Is three, I was just going to say, that's all it takes sometimes, maybe? No, no, oh, no, okay, no. Okay. But if that's all you got, you take what you got. If, if you can get six or eight hours a week or ten, whatever you can get that right. you can focus 100% and time block that time to – to build your business, then take it and just just continue moving forward. Maybe it takes two or three years to get to get it really going. Maybe it takes I know people that it's two or three years and then they finally get Hit going. Their, they get. finally get going. Right? Some people it's six months, some people it's three months, some people it's a year. Everybody's different, right? To get and, out and, the gate. And, and yeah. another part of the problem is all the agents compare themselves to each other. So this agent that hadn't sold anything in eight months, he's comparing himself to this guy that's been in the business for four years who's selling three a month. You can't do that. You can't, you can't do, do that. that. Yeah, you can't you do can't that. You can't do yeah. that. Yeah, you're setting yourself up for failure at that point right. pretty much. Right. And, but that, but it's tough, though, when you see that. and it's, and it's just, Right. It's, it's, it's like just, drilling. It's, in just, it's, it's just banging on you. You know, like this guy here, he's not even – I'm ten times smarter. Yeah. I work harder. And he's I'm, crushing it. Yeah, and he's crushing it. Like, and, and he's living the dream, and I'm sitting here – you know, working at Popeyes. <laughs> Hold on, Popeyes is pretty good. No, Popeyes, you know, is, yeah. Popeyes is great. <laughs> Popeyes is great. <laughs> so, so okay. So you you was able to fund your blueprint because you still maintain your roofing job. What yeah, the because, essence? Because and, the thing is, man, is like I let it take a long time. Right, fifteen years to get to a million dollars a year. Right. Right. So I'm just super long game. That's why the free coaching. That's the. Yeah, that's why the that's free the coaching. Because I'm looking at 20 years. In 20 years, I'll be 62. I'm thinking like, whoa, dude. Like I'm interviewing yeah. Patrick Bet today. I'm speaking at all Ryan stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I could probably pull a lot of big names and and really do some serious collabs and stuff already. And I'm still a little old Ricky from Alabama. Like you give me wow, some time. Very to, humble. I love that. You give me some time to get my content right. See, my content's not even right yet, and I'm already where I'm at. Yeah, my content's not even on point yet. Wait, which you're, which you're jumping the gun on my, the, the the next question is how did you how were you able to promote your blueprint? Well, let's go back to the to the funding, right? Because right. I just want to make this point. Like as I'm coaching my agents and and all that, my goal is is to cut all their expenses, minimize it as much as minimize possible. it. How okay. do I do that? Right. One is don't pay for coaching. <laughs> right? Wait, can you say that one more time? That is such a profound answer right there. <laughs> one is, right? Don't pay for coaching. Okay? That knocks that expense, that monthly expense. Which is a major expense of for a lot of people. Of dollars yeah. right, right off. Right at right right? the gate. The second right. expense, don't buy leads. Don't pay for coaching. Don't buy leads. And that's don't the biggest leads. obstacle for a lot of people that yeah. want to get into a field. Leads right. are, dude, what is a lead? A lead is any human in the market. They're everywhere. Humans are every everywhere I see. <laughs> yeah, it's a I human see, everywhere. I see one right here. I yeah, see one right, right there. there. I yeah. got two leads right here. Wow, that's a good point. Are you going to buy a house in your life? Of course. How yeah. many? <laughs> do, you <laughs> have an, do you have an agent you're going to work with on that? No, I don't. Right. <laughs> you're, a, you're a lead. I see how right. See I I'm see saying? the point you're making. Right, and right. So I can just call property owners that own the exact property I want to sell for a penny. I can get their information. I can call property owners that own the exact property I want to sell and just get to know them. Just build a relationship. Build a relationship, and I can do that for basically free. A penny is free to me. So while a lot of real estate agents or people that want to get in the industry don't realize they can get in for free. Literally, well, not, you, not you, can. You, I mean, you, you got to pay for licensing and all this right, stuff, right? But, right. but yeah, like, okay, free leads for sale by owners are free, and that's True. a really good. Uh, that's a really. I don't. I don't like them, right? But that the, right now, with how tight the market is, that's a great avenue, right? This just to get in and at approach the them as if they I approach them and see what they want to buy. They don't pay a commission on the buy side. See what they want to buy. Help them on the buy side. Eighty-seven oh. percent end up listing. Who do you think they're going to call? 
You. Ricky. Right. Got so, it. Uh, got there's it. all kinds of things, right? Open houses. Mm. Free. Events. Door knock. Go to the soda division you want to buy. You, you can't afford a penny, a contact, a column. Go and door knock them for free. Wow. Right? Okay. I mean, there's tons. Of, and, and like, okay, what do you can do? Buy leads and spend thousands of dollars to buy leads to end up doing the same thing, just talking to them one at a time. And then you're not even guaranteed of any type of success Nothing. rate or anything like Nothing. that. Right. It'd be about the okay. same because it's the same people, by the way. The same people they're selling you is the same people <laughs> I'm right. door knocking for free. Right? That but the, is true. The difference Good is point. I get to target the people I want to talk to versus being at the mercy of whoever you send me for a thousand bucks. Whatever the money that you yeah. paid for. Right. Makes sense. Okay. So, so being able to take away the cost of the coaching, so getting the information. And also eliminating the cost of your potential clients is a major, major factor on you being able to build your blueprint and fund it as well, it, not promote your blueprint, right? It, it, exactly, because, um, and that's what I teach agents is, I mean, listen, I've paid for coaching. Everybody, right? yeah, you yeah, need a mentor go, go, at the beginning. Go, I'm not saying, no, you know, if, you, if there's somebody you like, you want to get close to them, you want to spend some time with them and learn what they learn, go pay for it. I'm all about that. Right. Right, but I'm just saying, I'm here to help, and I'm not going to charge you a dime, and I'll give you my entire blueprint. Right, everything everything, everything that I know is at ZeroToDiamond.com about how to make a million dollars as a real estate agent. Right, it's really? all right there, black and white. So... You know, if you want that, great, it's there. If you want to go pay for coaching, that's fine. Go do it. But I'm saying this is an option. This can save you some money. And don't buy leads. How were you able to use social media to promote your brand and actually get it from zero to diamond? You know, that's a very, very fascinating question that the audience is dying to hear about. Yeah, so, and it is an interesting question. Yeah. It's an interesting story. Um, so, like, as I said, I didn't use social media to build my real estate business. Right, right? okay. So I've made that clear. Um, I was just focused on postcards, phone calls, and emails to build The it, conventional right? way. Yeah, but you know what's so crazy is that I didn't realize that I was actually building a personal brand with my weekly email. And so what people don't really understand is what a social media platform actually is right social media platform is a place where you post original consistent content right okay okay so when you go on social media what do you do engage follow well, you're holding your phone so. like this right right and you're doing this right you're scrolling right right now <laughs> when you check your email what motion are you are you doing Holding your phone. Holding your phone. Yeah. Either. And then you know, you're going like, like this. this. Yeah. Going through the thread. Right. 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 Okay. Same motion. Right. And so okay. email is a social media platform. Is it because of the physical motion or just the engagement? And I mean, I guess you have a point there in, in conjunction it's a with It's a place. Them. Okay. How many times a day do people check email? Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. How many <laughs> yeah. times a day do people check social media? Oh, I, okay. Yeah, okay. So okay. it's the same thing. So I say I wasn't using social media to build my real estate business, but you really was, right? right. Plot twist. <laughs> okay, I go for it. I actually was, and I didn't realize it. I was actually, I was actually doing the same stuff, right? Just right. not on social media platforms. And you just wasn't conscientious that she was actually building a personal brand at that point. Exactly, exactly. Okay. I was just like, okay, people want this information weekly. I'm going to give them the information weekly. Right. But then after 10 years of doing it, I built this brand where I basically was famous. Like I was like a celebrity to my wow. clients. Right. Because they're like Ricky's weekly email. I get it every week. I see him. Let's I see, look you know, forward to it. It's yeah, coming yeah, yeah. at a certain time. Boom. And so it was okay. literally social media, right? So, but I ignored the platforms per se, the quote unquote social media platforms, but I was doing the work of social media, right? Outside and, of social media. Well, well, I don't know. <laughs> Emails or social. See, the thing is, is uh -huh. when you look at, Different platforms, they do different things. Right. And okay. when you look at, um, like, uh, Facebook is different than Instagram, is different right. than Snapchat. Right, they have various purposes and things. Right, and, and uh, have you been on Discord? Yes. Okay, like, yes. totally different platform, totally different, right? Yeah. Totally Younger different version, platform, gamers right? gamers and things um, like that. You know, uh -huh. podcast, you know, those are platforms, right? Email, it's just, it, it, like, they're all a little different. A way right? of communicating, right? I see it's what you're saying. It's just a little bit different, you know. But it, but it's, it's just another platform that you post original, consistent content to build your brand. It's the same thing. So, so, so I want to ask you then: 
how in, in a scale of one to ten, what would you place building a personal brand on as far as if you wanted to be in a real estate agent or any type of online? Well, real estate, you think, real estate agent, you have to have personal brand, right? You have, I mean, so it's, this is necessary. Yeah, man. it's necessary, right? Whether you're doing it through email, postcards, smoke signals, like a, <laughs> whatever, right? <laughs> right? But But like, you know, on social media platforms, whatever, you know, you have to have a brand. Um, but there's many businesses you don't have to have a personal brand. E-commerce, you could build the e-commerce brand and build uh, the company around the company. The company itself, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of businesses you don't have to have a personal brand. But look at today's world and how many people are using their personal brand to blow up non-personal you know, non personal brand type businesses. True. Right? And, like, yeah. and, that, and that's, that's kind of the business of the future is to build your personal brand and then let that brand feed your feed all these other businesses. Everything else you right? have, right. Which okay. is what my business model is. Build the Ricky Carruth brand, billion dollar brand in the future. Beautiful. Build a billion dollar brand that feeds all these businesses that makes it a billion dollar brand, right? Right, okay. But anyway, back to your question. Um, so in 2017, when I decided to write two books and start trying to really help agents understand how I built my business super uniquely, right? I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do social media. This business and, and that, Period. Yeah, and that business <laughs> I have to do because I have to reach a lot of agents and I have to get my message in front of them. And the only way to do that is through social media, right? Social media. So then I was like, okay, let me take this monster on because I conquered the real estate world with email, postcards, and phone calls. Right, okay. Let me step my game up and learn this new digital, digital age side. game. And then I've got the best of both worlds. I've built my business like this, and now I'm going to build another business like this. And now I kind of understand all angles, but how, um, how was the learning curve when you made that transition? Say, okay, I need to dive into it's still happening. Media. Still happening. I still haven't got there. I'm so still, still a I'm still trying to figure it out. You're still a student. I'm right? still trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I went through a lot of different stages, and I, um, you know, I was making live calls and doing coaching okay. calls and stuff like that, and and I just blew up. Right, just testing different things. Yeah, whatever yeah. Gets the water I, like, go live. like um, Instagram blew up really fast. Right. You know, went okay. to 200,000 quick. Um, YouTube, um, I'm at about 100,000 now. Wow. Okay. And um, it, it just took a long time. Like, I've been doing right. it six, six years, and I'm just now at 100,000. And if I'm not mistaken, you're 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 very hands-on, if not. You're, you I know, do you have a little help. I do all my a... posting. I do all my uh, commenting and DMing, and I answer every single DM myself. Wow. I spend hours a day on DMs. Is um, that also a, a, a strategy that you personally decided you want to do, say, hey, I want to individually communicate with yeah, each and every yeah, one of my Yeah, 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 because the relationships that I build there, just when I respond, people are like, wow. Wow. I love yeah. this guy forever just for responding. You know what I mean? Not to mention whatever. I'm, I mean, I'm giving life advice and stuff in there. Wow, people are okay. reaching out with serious problems, you know. So it's um, almost you're like part-time psychologist in a way, therapist, right? A little in bit a way, because yeah. a lot of this stuff is perspective, right? right. It's like I was, you know, telling, uh, telling a guy – uh, just a second ago um, on an Instagram live, how much, pers because he's like, you know, what would you tell people that feel like they're stuck? I'm like, well, the first thing realize that you're not stuck. <laughs> right. You know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, stuck. yeah change when you, the when, mindset. When, when, you, when you look at where you are right now <laughs> right. in five years and look back at where you are right now, you're going to realize you were crushing it. But here you are in the moment thinking you're stuck. It's like, you're not stuck. It was like the, a guy last night, he was like, you know, I'll make a hundred calls and get a maybe. And he's like, even if that happens, I'm still happy. I'm like, wait a minute, bro. Whoa. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, well, but wait a minute. You made a hundred calls and got a maybe, right? Now think about if you did that every day for a year, 250 working days in a year, and you got 250 maybes. You're going to sell 10, 15 of those, not to mention the seeds that are going to be planted of those okay. people that will do business with you next year and the year after and the, and the year after. And everything, right. It's like, okay. it's like, man, you're crushing it. That's the thing. Like, you made 100 calls and got a maybe, you're killing it. That's it. Right? Nothing else, right? But, okay. pe but people look at that and they say, I'm stuck. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make it. It's, I'm probably not going to make it in this business. It's like, wait a minute. And that's why so many people fail is, is they fall into this, you know, I'm not, this. I'm not doing well when they're actually crushing it. So it's a perspective game. Right. Okay. Right? So anyway, back to your question. I started, um, I started on Facebook. I started a Facebook group. That was my first move. Okay. Um, the Facebook group's like 40 grand right now, 40,000 agents. Wow. 
And um, that's where I started and started posting on Facebook and stuff, running Facebook ads and kind of messing around with that. Then I started doing Instagram once I felt like I had good momentum. Then I right. focused on Instagram, felt like I had good momentum. Then I did YouTube. So, oh, so it was one platform at a time. I did. I just stair-stepped it. I would okay. focus on one platform and then move to another and then move to another and then podcast and then, you know, just every platform. Okay. Um, and then now, like... People that are like, how do you post on all these things and answer all these messages and go and, you know, sell all these properties and go to these meetings and go to these speeches and sp still knock off at five spin with the family and the weekends and all this stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, how long have you been doing this? You know, and they're mm. like, uh, three years. I was like, I've been doing this 21 years, bro. Ooh, it took me 21 yeah. years <laughs> to, 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 to stair step. I said, if you would have right. saw me at four years, like, you'd be like, this guy, I don't even know if he's going to make it. Right? right, if you just right. saw me That's at four years, yeah, like, like there like, was no, you wasn't trying to be omnipresent. You just wanted to hone in on one and take it from there. One, get it down. One, get it down. Like I did real estate for fifteen years and nothing else. You know, you know, I got back in the business in two thousand eight, and I didn't even know until two thousand fifteen or sixteen when I started investing in stocks. Right, I didn't even know that the mark that the stock market crashed in two thousand eight. Be what? <laughs> because you had all of your focus and energy in real estate yes. at that time. So it was I just was focused on one thing, selling properties and making a million dollars. That's how focused I was on, wow. on, on, on getting to the point where I'm making a million dollars. So it's, so you're not under the umbrella of the quote unquote serial entrepreneur. You're more of the, let me go deep into one lane here and fill that out. I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur, but uh -huh. I'm going to, I'm going to be the master of, this right before you before i try to stack something else Makes right sense. okay the, it's the people okay. that jump from thing to thing before they actually get the first thing they're never you know they never succeed at a super high level i want to i want to crush this right. and then like if i can get this going at a million bucks a year then okay i'll, I'll go i'll go stack some other things on top uh -huh. of it right okay i mean like i said i'm in sales coaching brokerage mortgage and investing Right okay. on, on and, top and, of my personal brand, and and all of this surrounds real estate, yeah. obviously, because you was able to hone in and lock down real estate, and again add the ancillary yep. parts to it and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, and you know the mindset you were you went through when you were promoting your personal brand mm -hmm. and building one platform at a time. Yeah. Now, as we wrap up the show, if there's one piece of advice, and the mindset of when you built your blueprint, if you could share with the audience, if you can just want piece of advice as far as what you would tell a new real estate agent in today's age if they wanted to get into the business and build a personal brand within two years, what's the one piece of advice you would give them? Post every day. Post every day. Post every day. Create content and post every day. Yeah, post at least once a day. Don't stop. And then maybe uh, those maybe's just end up turning to a yes. I, yeah, I mean, listen, right? here's the thing. If you've got uh, 500 followers and your vision is, is you're going to have 10,000, well, you got you got 9,500 9, people who aren't going to see the videos you're making today. This is practice for the future followers. They're not going to see your videos. Oh. You're not going to see the videos you make today. You think the videos you make today suck? Who cares? Right. Other people don't think it sucks. Other people uh, appreciate the fact that you made that piece of content, even though you think it sucks because you're too judgmental against yourself. What you should be doing is posting, you know, make as great a content as you can, post, and get better. Every time you post, you get a little better every time. You know, don't – I know a guy that he, he batches 100 videos in one setting, right, three months' worth of uh, – worth of content. Oh, just sit there and record everything and bust yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. He'll come okay. out with a, a hundred ideas and he'll 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 you know he'll batch a hundred videos, right, for three months worth of content. And I'm like, but man, like if you if you batch seven seven a week, um okay. if you batch seven a week and post once a week instead of a hundred and having uh you know three months uh -huh. worth of worth of uh worth of content. Right. Think about each week how much better you're going to get each week at, at, at delivery, uh, at the tone, cadence, at the editing, yeah. at everything, right? Right, You right. may think of something, like a lot happens in three months. You may see something on another piece of content that you think, man, that's good. I'm going to incorporate that into my content. Right. But you can't because you already locked into whatever your, whatever your skill level was three months ago into right. today's content. 
stopping your that, growth. Right? right. Like batch, but batch for a week. So like real estate agents always say, make calls all morning and do all your marketing and social media in the afternoon. It's a super simple schedule, right? If you do yeah. that, if you do that long enough, it's just a matter of time. It's not an if, it's a when you become a millionaire. If you really? just make calls all morning and do all your marketing and social media and making your videos and weekly emails and all that stuff in the afternoon, right? Okay. You make calls from nine to 12. You make videos from, from lunch to, to quitting time. Afterwards, you're yeah. going to crush it. There's no question about it. You may not crush it today or next month. I don't know when, the, when the breakthrough is going to happen. Right. It could be years. I don't know, but you will be a millionaire. Right. Wow. And so, okay. um, and so, but sit, you could sit down one, one after one day after lunch and actually script out and film seven great videos for one, one short form, 60 second video per okay. day. Right. And batch, batch out a, batch out a seven video session, you know, one okay. afternoon a week for your weekly, you know, content. And just be consistent on that be aspect. consistent and just get know? better every week at your, at each batch. We'll get a little better, a little better, a little better. You'll understand about okay. hooks. You'll understand about value. You'll understand about call to actions. Um, you'll understand better about editing. You'll, start to, you know, morph into your um, own brand in yeah, a way. Yeah, exactly. Pick your own lane and everything like that. And, you know, that's a very profound piece of advice you shared with everybody, because number one, not only people are aware that, hey, social media is a tool, right? You just, whether you want to use it for entertainment purposes mm. or marketing purposes. I got something on that real quick before we go. Go ahead. As far as social media being a tool. Um, um, I teach a class about once a month for a big group that, uh, it's a social media coaching program. Right. Okay. And I, and they bring me in once a month to just do a session. And, um, this past week I went in and, uh, you know, they're asking me questions and all this and that. And, you know, uh, and, and I was like, here's the thing. I didn't start doing social media to, to, to then try to do something. Right. I was trying to do something. And then realized social media was the tool I was going to use to do it. <laughs> I like right? that. I like that. So, like, okay. my thing was is <laughs> I want to get to agents. I want to reduce the failure rate. I want to help. I want to change the world. I want to show people my unique way of selling real estate. Right. 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 And then and then I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? Yeah, what's oh, the tool? Oh, oh, social media. This is what I'm going to use. Versus I think most people just say, I want to get... I want to, I want to, I want to be successful on social media. And they just, they don't have like a reason. Right, they don't, they don't have a game plan. They, they, well, they don't have a reason, right? They're just getting okay. on social. They're creating content around whatever. They're still trying to figure their niche out and all this stuff. It's and not strategic it, and intentional. Yeah. In the beginning. So and maybe, right. maybe they find their way or whatever. But my point is, is that, that you need to kind of understand why you're doing it, why you're creating the content. What is right. the goal? What are what is your big grand vision of this? Uh, sort and then of like use a, social media to accomplish that. Sort of like begin with the end in mind. Approach. Exactly. Right. So like that. That's like I got in, I didn't get into social media to build a business. I got into the business and then decided social media was going to be the path to be able to build a business. Wow. Well, you know what? You was able to definitely share, you know, your blueprint in becoming, you know, (laughs) (laughs) it's safe to say you, you know, in today's episode, you know, for a lot of the aspiring and even the established real estate agents or real estate professionals out there, they was able to, you know, garner some great gems from today's conversation and everything like that. And, you know, one thing I took, you know, several things I took away from our conversation. Number one, you know, the power of, you know, consistency, you know, number one. Number two, also the power of digging in deep into a particular lane before you start morphing out into other lanes as well, too. Yeah. And more importantly, you know, what you demonstrate above everything else no, believing in yourself. We're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, a roofer, <laughs> you know, a roofer from Alabama to now becoming, you know, you know, a, you know, a multimillionaire in, in the real estate game, educating others and everything like that. So more power to you, more blessings. So if there's any final thoughts before we wrap up the show, you want to leave the audience? Bro, I think we said it all. We covered honestly. a lot today, man. It's about an hour and a half conversation, you know, hour and a half conversation. But again, you know, even if you're not into real estate, I think a lot of people would appreciate today's conversation as yeah. well, too, because real estate is one of those generational wealth lanes here. And I yeah. believe that every person, every person should own a piece of property. There's no doubt. 
<laughs> There's no doubt. Multiple pieces of property. <laughs> multiple. Right? Let's start with for one, sure, right? Sure. And, and and I know a good agent. Right? <laughs> right? They can call me anytime if they need to buy a house. I'm right? good to go. Well, listen, if anybody wants to follow you, yeah. find out which, by the way, what do you have up next coming? You know, outside of from the growing your zero to diamond community, you have a lot of things in your plate. I know you're traveling, engagements and things like yeah, that. Yeah, traveling with the three community. times a month to uh, to speak all over. Okay. Uh, let's see, where am I going from here? I'm going to D.C., Richmond, uh, Houston, Vegas, Sacramento. Wow. Uh, Vegas twice. Um who, who knows where right. I, got, I got a trip to South Africa. I'm wow. To, Internationally to speak, beautiful. To okay. speak to, uh, uh, there's a company called private property. That's, that's kind of like the Zillow of South Africa. Okay. And, uh, so they called me last year. They wanted me to come last year, but it was too short notice. So they put me in the books for this year. Beautiful. So it's like going to be 4,000 South African real estate agents. So that's wow. going to be a lot of fun. It's your first time internationally, uh, by the no, way. No, no, no. I, okay, I went to, I was the keynote at uh, R4 in Brazil, the, 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 uh, Remax, uh, uh, Brazilian, uh, national Remax convention. Dope. Dope. It was a really, really, really cool experience. Great experience. Yeah, I bet, huh? Yeah. So, okay. but that was the, that was the only one so far. So this would be the second trip out of the country to go speak, you okay. know, and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of uh, followers in South Africa and really all over the, all over the world. Like how, how, how is international real estate? Is that a whole other really, animal? It, it is. I, I learned that when I went to Brazil, um, you know, Brazil, I didn't realize this at all at all right right when i get there i'm totally oblivious to to their right. situation right and when i get there the more i started talking to the agents the more i realized wait a minute you guys don't even have an mls right they don't have mls oh, and wow. they don't they don't have like county records and comps and stuff right um so when the agents sell a property they know the comp because they sold it and like uh, some of them like won't share that information with the other agents that's kind of like that's their an internal thing yeah yeah, they yeah, keep. yeah. That, that's, that's like crazy. that's like their information to use to get more listings and stuff right and also because there's no mls and there's no board of realtors and stuff like that right there it's more of an open listing uh policy right where the seller will go out and literally list their property with like eight different agents it'll be like eight different listing agents right and the first one that brings the buyer wins Wow, it's almost like a, a so, first come first serve in yeah, a way. Yeah, and, and so and so like here in here in the state, see, this is one thing agents don't right here. There's we're so spoiled here, right. and we didn't realize how good we have it. Um, when you know when we list a property uh, here, we mm -hmm. literally list it, we put on MLS, and then we go get other listings, and we just sit there and let another let agent, the MLS do it. Yeah, thing. we let another agent come in and sell the property, and then we get our commission. Right, it doesn't okay. matter who sells it, we get the money. We have an exclusive right over there. It's an open. Uh, open listing, no exclusive listings to that one agent. It's open right. to many agents, anyone, right? right. Okay, and the first one who brings a buyer wins. So, it, like agents here, if you can imagine living in a world where when you list a property, now you got to hurry up and go find the buyer before another agent finds the buyer for that listing, or you're not going to get the deal at all. You're not going to get any wow. commission. Wait a minute, I have so many follow up questions on that. I mean, and so it's the same thing in South Africa. They don't have an MLS, right? And so they're behind, I would say, in both of those countries, a good 20, 30 years technology wise. Well, hold on. I could push back on that because imagine if we had that system here. Wouldn't that increase the success rate of agents because now they're forced to work? They're not. Could be. They're not. They're not relying on the MLS and having, like you say, another agent. And I just don't say, know hey, because my I don't know because the. I think maybe the top agents will have such huge databases that when they get the listing, they're going to sell that really quick, no matter how many okay. how many agents. And so the newer agents have smaller databases and have less of a reach. It'll be really tough for them to kind of break in. Okay. To the market, I, I, you know, it's just that's just speculation. I don't know. It could turn out the way you're saying, or maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Right. I would crush it in that envir environment right. because I would build. <laughs> like my thing is the same thing I built my business. I would build a huge database of buyers, right? And that would be my thing when I go to listing appointments. Hey, I've got database of buyers, right? Yeah. I'll send it out to my people and I'll sell it. List it with as many agencies you want to. I'm going to be the first to bring a buyer. Yeah, because you so, got all the database of the buyers. What, what, <laughs> I think what's cool is is people have more listings because the mm. eight, the seller will list it with eight different agents. Right. And so it's like when you know you, you when you know when you go to a listing appointment, you're going to get the listing. Yeah, it's like right? I'm that shit now. Right. Yeah. Well, but because, <laughs> because because they're going to list it with you know a bunch of agents, so you're going to get the listing. Okay. But then you got to find the buyer on the back end. So, so it, I'm assuming with that system, the cream of the crop would 
what would would be a you know almost like crony capitalism here because here in America you know we always say how the government that the elites are getting everything on the top and the bottom or something yeah almost in that in that realm there with kind South, of it, it would almost have that effect I'm assuming yeah kind of but it's interesting to understand the different yeah. dynamics of the different um, countries and how they operate like in India you don't even have to have a license in Colombia you don't even have to have a real estate license. Any average um, Joe can just... Yeah, you can just go and just sign up for Remax or whatever. I'm sure that there's some kind of right. thing that you have to do to sign, like, sign a contract with Remax or this, that, and the other. But you don't have to, like, go take a class, a test, continue ed, all that stuff, right? So, like, the different countries have a lot of different dynamics when it comes to real estate. And it's cool to understand the different dynamics and uh, for me to, to, to learn the differences and, and stuff. Because, honestly, there's opportunity, Right. right. There's opportunity, you know, to bring technology to some of these countries and stuff like that. And yeah. Like that, yeah. There, right. There's some massive opportunities, um, you know, so uh, we'll see kind of what happens in the future with that. But, yeah, um, going there and just all over the place. So that's what's uh, up. That's what's yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. So just continuing to try to build a brand. Definitely catch Ricky, guys, uh, across all his platforms. There's no telling where he's going to be. He's almost like Where's Waldo in a way, right? You know what I do <laughs> most of the time that when I go somewhere, I put on my Instagram story, hey, I'm going to be at this hotel gym at 6, like I did that here, 6 o'clock every day. I'll be here if anybody wants to meet up. or Wow, that transparent. Well, as a real estate agent, you have to have that 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 spirit, you know, that open door policy, I'm yeah. assuming, right? Yeah. So I'll have followers that just show up at the gym and hey, hey, you know, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so definitely, man. You have guys... you ever been fearful of being that transparent or no? Like, you no, know? not at all. Mm, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm in a public place. I'm in a gym. You know, that like I got a, I got a ten pound weight in my hands. So if they try <laughs> something, <laughs> watch it, guys. You're gonna crack you, man. It's pretty I, uh, strong, I, uh, big guy. Yeah. I, I'll tell you this, and, and you're gonna want to ask a bunch of questions, but uh -huh. I'm not gonna let you because the the show's over. Right. But, um, good. Speaking on all that, I traveled and did dozens and dozens of uh, jujitsu tournaments, oh, and I did okay. two MMA fights uh, ten years ago. Uh -huh. um, so I did martial arts for like a decade and a half. Oh. Mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu, two different kinds of jiu-jitsu, karate, kickboxing, all that stuff. Okay, well, I so should I call you a while. Ricky, a.k.a. Kick Your Ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ricky, thanks for definitely coming to the studio today. Great conversation, great interview. Hopefully, we can bring you back. Oh, you know, I'd love when you're to, man. absolutely. I'd love to. Part you know, two. part two. Yes. Okay. Which, by the way, guys, you could catch Ricky on Facebook, Instagram, all his social media platforms, which is at Ricky, Ricky Carruth. Carruth yeah. Correct. Absolutely. And um, we can't tell you what his upcoming schedule is because he's everywhere. But if you do have, want to follow where Ricky is going to be at next, you know, his speaking engagements, his coaching classes or anything real estate, definitely follow him on his social media channels. And as he mentioned, he usually posts uh, uh, prior to his destination where he's going to be at. So with that being said, also you could check out all of the past episodes of Respect My Blueprint on all streaming platforms, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, as well as Google Podcasts. And as always, guys, if you want to learn more about your blueprint, again, how to build, promote, fund, or even plan your blueprint like the discussion we had with Ricky today, definitely check out the past episodes or go ahead and book a consultation with myself or the sales team. We would definitely like to help you get your blueprint to the next level. And as always, as always, great conversation. Have a great day, guys. Smiles are free. Give it away. Have a blessed day. Catch you on the flip side.